Hi guys, Ranger Stu here, and it is week four of Ranger Stu's Virtual Zoo. And this week we are going to be learning about habitats. So I am going to show you four animals from four different habitats. The first one being a desert, the second, a rainforest, the third, a woodland, and the fourth, rivers. So we're gonna start with deserts. And I'll tell you all about them, and then we'll meet a meerkat. Habitat one is the desert, and deserts are dry and have a tiny amount of rainfall each year. When we think of deserts, they look a bit like this, really hot. But did you know that some deserts are actually extremely cold? So I hope you know what this is. This is Antarctica. And believe it or not, the Antarctic is a desert. It never rains. And the animals that live in deserts have adapted to survive extreme temperatures and hardly any water. So let's meet one of them now. We're at the meerkat enclosure here at Cedars Nature Centre and behind me we have Mungo who is on the swing having a little scratch there and Iceman's just over here. I might call him over, he might come over. Iceman, you coming over to say hello? Can you see him? There he is. Oh, he's going to stand up as well. And uh, our next habitat is deserts. So meerkats are from a desert called the Kalahari Desert. And as you can see with me sort of squinting in the sun, today it's really quite sunny. And the meerkats love nothing more than facing the sun, uh, absorbing those sun's rays, and it acts a bit like a solar panel to keep them lovely and warm to go around their business, whatever they want to be doing for the day. Um, I see that Iceman's run off now somewhere, but uh, Mungo's having a bit of a scratch. So I think it's about time to move on to our next habitat, which is rainforests. Habitat two is rainforests. And we covered rainforests in depth in week one of Ranger Shoes Virtual Zoo, so check that out. But uh, the rainforests are hot and humid, and they have a massive amount of rainfall each year. And so in that sense, they're essentially the opposite to deserts. There are millions and millions of animals and plants that live in rainforests. Um, here's an extremely satisfied sloth, for example. However, sadly, we don't have a sloth at my zoo. So I thought I'd introduce you all to Reggie. So this beautiful creature is Reggie. And Reggie is a boa constrictor. And boa constrictors you do find in rainforests. In fact, they are found throughout Central and South America and they like to hide in the trees and in the understory and the rainforest floor as well. And they hide there for two reasons. One, to find their prey. They like to eat small mammals or, or lizards, um, or to hide from predators. There are animals that would love nothing more than trying to eat Reggie, even though he's quite a big snake. He's about six foot long. And uh, sometimes you find boa constrictors living near rivers, which brings us on to our next habitat rivers. Habitat free is rivers and rivers flow from a water source usually far away from the ocean but eventually most rivers flow into a lake or a sea and rivers are usually fresh water but as they reach the sea the water mixes and sometimes they can become brackish. Some rivers are small like a stream and some rivers are extremely fast, like rapids, but all of them contain life. So let's find out about the river fish that live at Cedars Nature Centre. So when we think of habitats, a lot of the time we think of habitats on land, such as deserts and rainforests and woodland. However, much of the planet is made up of water. So we have to think about habitats under the water, such as rivers, and lakes, the sea, even thermal vents deep in the ocean. There are crabs and tiny little creatures that live on those thermal vents, boiling hot, however they still survive. So behind me we have one of our um, water features, I guess, of the zoo. It is our pond, and we're gonna meet some of the animals from that pond now. These fish that you see here are goldfish, and this is our goldfish pond. We actually have about 75 goldfish in this pond and we also have a few carp as well. I'm going to see if I can get an up close uh, video of a carp for you later. Uh, we've got two common carp and two mirror carp. Uh, one's called Percy 
and one's called Joe, and the others don't have names, unfortunately, but I'm gonna very quickly bring you down here because can you see these tiny fish? These tiny fish are baby goldfish. I'm gonna try and get a bit of a closer view of them. And baby goldfish are born black or hatch black, but they can turn gold like the one in the top right there. Um, or they can stay black or they can go white or orange or red. And if you look at our goldfish, you'll see all different colors. You don't have to be gold to be a goldfish. So unfortunately guys, I couldn't find the carp to film for you. However, the fish in the pond are found in cold water rivers, okay? So carp are found in lakes and rivers and it's cold water. But the fish behind me are found in warm water rivers. And I'm gonna get the camera a little bit closer and tell you a bit more about them. These lovely fish here are called rummy nose tetras and they are a species of South American fish found in rivers. Um, in fact, these guys in the wild are found in what's called black rivers, just because of all the leaf decay and uh, it makes the rivers quite dark. They're quite fast, so we're gonna move on to another species of fish in this tank. When we think of habitats, guys, we shouldn't just think of the fish. These are assassin snails, and they are found in Indonesia, throughout Southeast Asia, actually. And uh, these ones are all asleep. There's one on the move over here. There you go, that's a better one there. And we use these snails in the tank because they eat lots of the snails that we really don't want, the ones that eat plants. So these guys are carnivores. And um, you can see it moving around, looking for its prey now. In fact, one of them's buried down there. In fact, there's two buried down there. We breed these guys really well. And um, in the daytime, they spend most of their time buried, apart from that one. And, and then uh, at night time, they go out to feast. Look, there's another one buried there. But in rivers, you have plants. And so we've got lots of live plants in this fish tank. And um, you have to remember that habitats aren't just made up of animals, they are made up of plants as well. Our final habitat is woodlands. And woodlands are similar to many other habitats with trees, but the trees are further apart than a rainforest and they don't have as much rain, okay? Woodlands have plenty of light, as you can see in this photo, and loads of shrubs and grasses and flowers amongst the trees as well. Woodlands also have lots of animals living in them, just like this deer, and so it was a hard choice as to which animal from the zoo I was gonna show you, but um, it just had to be Wallace, so enjoy. So we're here guys in our skunk enclosure, and this is Wallace, and Wallace is a North American striped skunk. And you find skunks in lots of different habitats, including woodlands. So we have put Wallace on the ground to show him a little bit more easily as he was quite wriggly. And you can see him jumping around uh, and sort of pulling himself backwards, being a bit silly. This is play behavior, but um, in the wild, they if they were doing that, it's a defense, okay? So what they do is they stamp their feet, they arch their back, and if the predator still doesn't go away, then they turn around, lift up their tail, and <laughs> stink ya. So I'm gonna see if we can uh, play with him some more and get some of that real good behavior for you. <laughs> so this is him being a bit silly, jumping about. He'll flash his bottom, I'm sure, in a minute. Oh, there we go. And uh, this is just him sort of saying, stay away or I'll spray. He won't, he's friendly. So I hope you enjoyed meeting the meerkat, the skunk, the boa constrictor, and the fish. And don't forget, a habitat is a place where an animal lives where it has shelter, food, water, and animals of its own species. If you want to find out more about habitats, then I did release a blog on Monday, and I'll drop a link into the descriptions on the YouTube page. And um, we are making habitat boxes on there and learning a bit more about animals as well. So I hope you enjoyed that video, guys, and we'll see you all soon.